All right, hi everybody. Uh, today I'm gonna discuss a code called XFOIL and I'm gonna demonstrate how you can install this code. It's a really nifty uh, aerodynamics package for getting lift and drag coefficients and studying airfoils. Um, but first and foremost, I wanna demonstrate to you that you can install XFOIL to your system and even use it as some kind of uh, batch scripting mode where you can in, input some kind of parameters that you want to study, and then also you can visualize the results. So there you have it. I want to show how you can install XFOIL to your system and also to show that it is possible to build it from source. All right, let's get into it. All right, now that we have all of our dependencies installed, um, and now that we have XFOIL uh, unpacked on our system, let's go into it. And anytime you're building any kind of um, open source code, you're going to want to look at the readme. Typically, they come with one. And within the readme, you can find a set of instructions for building the code. Uh, here's the build sequence. There's three steps we're going to want to take. This first step is going to be the most cumbersome, but it is definitely, uh, definitely overcomable. We can go ahead and go into this um, ORRS directory, like it says, and I already have my terminal open. I'm going to cd into the ORRS directory, like it says. I'm going to see what's inside. They say use the readme that is in here. So I'm going to use Vim to read it and text edit as well for the rest of this video. Vim is kind of my favorite text editor. Uh, it's really fast once you get used to it. And so, anyways, the instructions are kind of kind of uh, ad hoc written, but you essentially want to print your working directory, go into the source, edit this uh, osmap.f source file, and make sure that the uh, file path under here is is uh, corresponds with this working directory that you print out. So anyways, um, you want to keep this really short because 4chan will have a problem with longer uh, file paths just as a heads up. All right, so I'm going to do that and you would want to follow these steps on your own system. All right, let's see. And it was osmap.f. So I'm using tab complete. It generally makes things easier. Um, I've also done this like a few times, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go to line 101, which I know to be the right place for the os file variable change. All right, and then we're also gonna tap in this osmap.dat uh, file name. There we go, okay. And so if you're using Vim, you want to hit the colon WQ to write quit. Uh, and also you can show line numbers by just saying set number. And we are on line 101 to make this change. All right, so let's go ahead and write this. Let's check the readme just to make sure that we are not missing anything. Okay, so we need to edit the make file, put in the right compilers and the right uh, double precision uh, settings. Okay. So let me pause the video for a second and grab those flags, and then we can proceed. All right, so let's continue. I have grabbed the right compiler flags. I'm going to go into, uh, oh, where, where is the make file again? All right, the make file. OK, it says go into the bin directory. And uh, since I didn't CD into the source file, I'm just going to go straight into the bin and edit the, all right. It's in the bin directory. We're in ORS slash bin. We're going to make edit this make file. And anytime you see FC, the FC variable, we're going to replace that with G4Tran since that is our Fortran compiler of choice. Um, and here are the flags that I was grabbing. Essentially, what these are are telling G4Tran to use a standard legacy format and then set eight bits for the real uh, double precision type of format, and then same thing for integers. Um, don't worry too much about these. These other, uh, they're extraneous, but you do want to make sure that any other FC variables are commented out since we want to use the ones we just defined. All right, so let's scroll down. There's no issues. OK. And lastly, the readme back there told us to then make with this OS gen target. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Those are just warnings. We're good to go. 
uh, we've compiled and made the osgen.o file, which is what Xfoil is going to look for during its compile. So let's go back a couple of steps and now go to uh, step two. Step two is to go to the plotlib uh, directory and edit that make file. So we're going to pretty much rinse repeat and put in the right compiler as well as the same flags that we just used. All right. G Fortran. And this code here uses a little bit of C. Uh, so you're gonna need the C GCC compiler, but most of the time your Mac will come with that. Oops, okay. So I need to go grab those arguments again. Uh, we're gonna change this DP variable so that the F for FF flags or Fortran flags use the same ones that we did last time. All right. Uh, all right, then make file. There we go. So I just want to copy these. All right. You want to go down to set line numbers just so you know which one to change. I'm going to change this. There we go. And so then the next thing we want to do, oh, the vim, uh, or sorry, the make file also has a, um, it has this config.make file we're going to also want to edit. So let's go to config.make. We're also going to have to change the compiler flags in there too. So that can trip some people up, but it's not going to trip us up today. G Fortran, what else? All right, I think that's about it. Actually, we're gonna wanna set this DP variable here. All right, and we're gonna drop in those flags. What else? All right, and I think we're good to go now. So if we just do make uh, lib plt.a, which is what we're going to do here. Should be good to go. All right, those are just warnings. We have now compiled the plot library. Uh, and now let's do the last step and go into the binary where we can now make XFOIL. Um, there are a couple of extra steps here. Um, so we're going to have to edit this make file. There are a couple of new flags I'm going to show you. Uh, and I'm also going to suggest that you edit the uh, install directory so that this can be uh, an in automatic install for your Mac. So let me uh, pause this for a second and grab that our, uh, set of flags that you want to put in there. Alrighty, so I've got the flags now and we've gone into our xfoil slash bin directory. We're going to edit this make file. That, this is pretty much the last step. Um, this bin dir variable essentially tells make to where to install. So we're going to set that as user local um, bin, which is a typical file path that your system will look in for different executables. Um, then we're also going to, oh, let me turn on my numbers. We're also going to adjust the compiler flags as usual, G Fortran. And set these like so. So these are the new flags that I'm using. I'm still using the standard legacy format, but I tacked this on because I noticed that the code had used this elsewhere. We're also using this O2 flag just to link different libraries together. Um, all right, and I think we should be good, but scroll down because there are a couple uncommented FCs. All right. All right, and so now that I've commented those extra things out, the rest of it, just compile stuff, you're good to go. Um, let's go ahead and do make XFOIL. All right, we've got a little warning there, but it's not a big deal. 
This should just take a second. Well, maybe a few seconds. All right, so now we have a working executable for XFOIL, but um, there's a couple more make commands that we need to, uh, to do. I wanna point out that make pp plot is not gonna work. There's some kind of logic error or some kind of um, syntax thing going on with, within pplot.f. I don't wanna go in there and fix it because I'm not quite sure what that might affect, but make px plot will for sure work. Um, so we're good to go on that. And then the last command, which is not in the readme, but really should be, is make install. So, okay, I've got a little error because there's this thing that we need to take out. In the install targets, this progs variable, since we had an issue with pplot, we're gonna have to take that one out. Uh, since those are the only two executables that we know to, to work, we're gonna then try it again. Um, I'm gonna go make install, and it has now installed xfoil npx plot to your user local, local bin. Uh, and so if we type in which xfoil, we now have xfoil on our system and we can now engage it, uh, the interactive input file system. So let's go ahead and show that this works by going to um, an example that I have developed, um, well, actually borrowing some code from my, one of my professors. Um, we're gonna go into this example uh, and show that this executable will then be useful for uh, studying airfoils. So let's go to xfoil geo.script, and this is my interactive way of loading the airfoil. You can, so, oh, okay. So it, it did not load the xfoil.def uh, because I deleted it, but it did load my profile for the wing. So if I go GDS, then we should be able to see this profile. We can do a whole lot of different things like go in the opera. Uh, oh yeah, I need to get out of that one, opera. And then let's just do alpha zero and we can start doing some fun stuff. Uh, more more to come on this, but essentially this shows that Xfoil works on a Mac and you can in fact build it from source uh, despite how old this code is. Um, without further ado, I want this is my first video. I want to mention um, feel free to like and subscribe if you like if you like this video. All right, take it easy.